Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Diane Chronic. you're also here on this Destiny 2 video, and today we're going to be going over my top 10 favorite PvP primaries in Destiny 2. And again, as always, this list is completely subjective based on my own opinion and a couple of the opinions of some of the people I talk to to create this list. So obviously, you're going to have your own favorite weapons, so please, in the comments down below, let me know what those are and tell me why. Because I'm a nerd in Destiny 2 like you, I want to try to use the best of the best. And of course, thank you to my my buddy Zoomzy for helping me pick out different PvP weapons and with the spreadsheet and with the gameplay you're seeing today. No more of my really poor PvP gameplay, you're actually going to be seeing somebody who knows how to aim. You can find a link to his Twitch in the description down below. And of course along the way you'll be seeing a spreadsheet on screen. This spreadsheet is something that I created for you to use in case you wanted recommended roles for different kinds of weapons, if you wanted to see my understanding of different weapons, or you just wanted to see everything in a large list format all next to each other so you can compare stuff that will be fully public and available for you to use all you have to do is head over to my discord which can be found in the description down below and head over to the channel hashtag d2 spreadsheets and there should be a link to this spreadsheet and if you haven't heard already i have a giveaway going on right now that will be ending at the end of march so really not a lot of time left for an astro a40 headset blue microphone product and a control freaks gift code so please go in the description down below to the gleam link pretty straightforward kind of things like follow the twitter follow of the Twitch stuff like that and get yourself some free stuff and if you don't end up winning make sure you check out the links that are at that giveaway and in the description down below for 5% off anything from Astro and 10% off of anything from Control Freak. Oh hey there's cute animals on screen how did, how did that get there? Oh I mean I guess you know they're there you might as well like the video. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, let's go ahead and get into the main content of the video that's going to encapsulate this spreadsheet right here. And again, the spreadsheet is fully public for you to use at my Discord, as I mentioned before with the instructions. And throughout this main section of the video, you can obviously already see what my top 10 is. You can go to the spreadsheet yourself and see what my top 10 is. But in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to explain the top 10. And on top of that, we're going to explain the meta, give you an idea of the structure of the meta and why certain weapon types are not being used, why certain weapons are way better than other weapons in the same type, that's what the important part of this video is, and not just saying what the top 10 are, because that's simple. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through different types of weapons, like we'll start off with the bows here, talk about how they fit in the meta, why they do and don't fit, and move from type to type until we get through the top 10. Starting at the bottom, then we go all the way to the top. First and foremost, let's talk about bows. We did get a new bow this season, Season of the Worthy, the point of the stag that came in with the Iron Banner Pursuit. I have gotten this weapon, and I've gotta tell you, it's just a bow. The only unique part about it is that it does in fact have Vorpal weapons and no distractions. Vorpal weapons allowing you to actually two-shot supers. I did get a 110 damage headshot with a bow once on a super, but beyond that, it's still a bow, and bows are still very poor in the Crucible, because you shoot somebody, get 150 damage headshot, and they just walk behind cover. And that's pretty much how every engagement with a bow goes. Quickly touch in on grenade launchers. The only grenade launcher for primary ammo is going to be the Fighting Lion. It's kind of an interesting weapon, can be used for some wombo combos where you fire the Fighting Lion, get a hit of damage, switch to another weapon and finish off the target. Can be used to do some nice stuff, but in my opinion, I'd rather have a special ammo weapon most of the time than having two primary ammo. However, they did get a lot of buffs to the fighting line this season. I don't really know why, but they did a lot of different things to make it better. Next up, let's talk about these scout rifles. Now, general game philosophy for weapons is that the longer range that something can reach out to, the less it can do in damage, and that just makes sense. A sidearm and a scout rifle can't do the same damage, otherwise, why would you ever want to use the sidearm? And that holds true in Destiny as well, and always has held true in Destiny. So in my opinion, I don't think scout rifles are ever going to become part of the meta unless there's something drastic that changes with the maps. Now if you don't know, every single season they remove a few maps from the rotation in Crucible and then they add in a few new maps. In this season, there's a lot more close range maps than there have been in the past. Now this is just a slight preference to the closer range weapons, but even then, when it comes to long range, I would rather just use a sniper rifle. It can one shot, it can two shot in the body, why would you want to use something like a scout rifle? You're always going to be outgunned, and it's very common 
that there's going to be enemy snipers, so it's it's just a losing battle. If you are still looking to get Randy's throwing knife, which I consider the best in class, might I recommend the Night Watch or the Symmetry? Symmetry having some excellent stats on it, making it a lot easier to get uh, those scout rifle kills. All right, moving on to a category that actually has a top 10 ranked weapon, the sidearms. Now, the sidearms have come, actually, in my opinion, a long way in the last few seasons. I used to just completely forget they even existed, but they're actually a lot better than they used to be, especially in PvE, and there's definitely some good options in PvP. A lot of people were clamming over the last hope last season, spending millions of Fractaline just to get that fabled god roll on it, and honestly, it has some pretty impressive DPSs. So instead of using a shotgun, you could actually have a Last Hope on you or any of these sidearms, and it functions in a very similar way, allowing you to get some very fast kills at close range, very similar to how SMGs work, but in a slightly different style. But oftentimes, I find myself just wanting to use a shotgun or a fusion rifle, both of which were buffed in a way that made them more consistent in the last patch. Next up, let's talk about submachine guns. A very interesting category that's been kind of back and forth over the years. We've seen Antiope D dominating in the double primary days. We saw Huckleberry have its time in the limelight. Definitely a very powerful PvE option as well. And then, of course, five seasons ago, for pretty much the last five seasons, we've seen Recluse. Pretty much, in my opinion, the only SMG worth your time because of so many different reasons. And honestly, it really cannot be beaten. Recluse has a faster reload perk with Feeding Frenzy. It has a damage perk with Master of Arms. It has the fact that it's lightweight, meaning you can move faster to the target, escape battles, and lightweights do better crit modifiers. It also has a ranged masterwork, ricochet round. It, it's just an extremely well bit weapon. And then finally, it has a perfect 100 recoil pattern, meaning it just goes straight up and down. So, in my opinion, there's pretty much nothing that can beat the Recluse at its game. Until, obviously, it gets forgotten with the uh, new system of weapons where they make it so you can only infuse weapons up to a certain level, allowing for new weapons to shine over the old weapons. Moving on to the next item, we have the Pulse Rifles, which in my opinion are going to be the third best weapon type in the entire game for PvP, with my number five on all three of these, pretty much all very similar weapons, 390 Adaptive Frame Pulse Rifles, and I have to say, if you're new to the game, these are the kind of weapons that you're going to want to use, outside of the Auto Rifles, in my opinion, because Pulse Rifles in general are just a lot easier to use, and definitely easier to use on console than they are with mouse and keyboard. Personally, I still use my controller while playing on PC, and uh, these things just, just do very, very well. On top of that, they also oftentimes, especially the 390 adaptive frames, reach out to the longest distances on most of the maps. So, in, like I said before, Sky Rifles really have no purpose because Pulse Rifles can handle their ranges and still have better DPS. And when it comes to all of the different Pulse Rifles, honestly, the 390 adaptive frames are just my favorite. Firstly, they have a lot of great attributes to them, really great stats, reach out to some really great range. They're not too too slow of fire rate like the 340s are. These three specific ones have great availability in Infamy, World, and Crucible drops. They have great perks, uh, reload perks, damage perks across the board, uh, different options. It's just an amazing amalgamation of a good weapon. Pretty much the best of the best that you can find for pulse rifles. In my opinion, the 450 shoot a little bit too fast. Don't have as much range in the 540s, obviously, a little bit more on that side. And the 340s are just too slow. If you are playing on PC, though, I will say as a caveat here, even though this is a PS4 based spreadsheet that their uh, pulse rifles are not as good because they don't automatically lock on with the burst it's this weird mechanic where they burst less in a direction if you're on target and it just makes them easier to handle with the controllers aim assistance and aim drag than with mouse and keyboard coming up next is going to be the second best weapon type in my opinion we have the hand cannons now there is the most number of top ranked weapons in this category the most number of listed weapons because there are so many good ones but as you'll find out with the auto rifles i think the auto rifles just have some significant advantages with the passive stuff but we'll talk about that when we get there so there's a lot of weapons in this list that are very good that we could talk about a lot of weapons that have fallen from grace that aren't as good as they used to be that i could talk about but i don't want to spend that much 
this time because there is a lot of things that can be said. So I'll try to be brief about this. Firstly, for the last word, they did a lot of changes to it, making it a lot more of a blind fire kind of weapon, meaning that even though it still has a great time to kill, it's a lot less consistent because you're not allowed to aim down sights to get that extra damage boost. The Crimson is less useful in my opinion because a lot more people are used to dealing with the auto rifle recoil these days where the Crimson is not as surprising to a lot of people. Luna's Howl and Not Forgotten, even though they have the precision frame recoil pattern, it's really not that different than the new 150 animation we got a few seasons ago and their perk is basically useless because it doesn't ever, in my opinion, like ever give you better time to kill. Moving on to the number 10 slot, we have the Ace of Spades, a weapon that was very close to not being in the top 10. For the most part, the PvP sweats understand that the 140 RPM hand cannons and the 150 RPM hand cannons pretty much kill in the same number of headshots and oftentimes in the same number of body shots, so you might as well go with the faster fire rate weapon because the range difference is not that significant. However, Ace of Spades is such a well-built weapon, so available from a very easy exotic quest from Forsaken. It has the ability to see a radar while aiming down sights. You can get the Momentum Mori long-lasting kill clip style kind of thing. You can get the faster reloads with Firefly. Uh, you get so many great things with this weapon. It also has a range of 86. To put it in perspective, I believe the Duke's base is like under 90, like around 90, which is a significant amount for a 140 RPM hand cannon. Now the caveat here is even though the 150s technically have a better time to kill than that of the 140s, if you're new to the game, that's not really going to matter. Oftentimes, you're not going to utilize the full 150 RPM, and that's why Ace of Spades definitely deserves in the top 10, because it's just such a well-built weapon, and exotics are really not that critical to have in any particular slot in the Crucible. As for number 7 on this list, the Sunshot in the 150 category. The rest of these weapons are going to be in 150 category, because that's pretty much the best for the hand cannons at the moment. It has a lot of great benefits. First of all, it explosive rounds. Second of all, when you kill somebody, they explode. Thirdly, you get more range of stability from the catalyst, and you just get better and better stuff all along the way. And ever since they buffed the clip size and the reload size a few seasons ago to make it just way more usable, the Sunshot is an excellent weapon to use, excellent stats to have on it, and also explosive rounds, meaning it's easier. You can accidentally hit people, you can knock back people's aims. It's just an excellent weapon to use. Up next at number three, we have the Thorn. In my opinion, a very, very powerful weapon for a lot of reasons you guys may not realize. First of all, it's in that Goldilocks zone of 150 RPM, best kind of time to kill in the game. Secondly, it has a very special perk that allows you to deal damage over time to an enemy, otherwise known as DOT. Now, this damage over time is very minimal. You'll see like twos pop off of the enemy. It's not a lot of damage, but what it does do is it allows you to see where that enemy is going going and it also stops them from regenerating health allowing you to trump the recovery of a lot of enemies which is something very significant and very powerful allowing you to rush in catch up with the target before they can regenerate any of their health on top of that once you get that better soul devourer mark of the devourer bonus you can two shot headshot enemies which is pretty nice. Coming up at number two in my top countdown are going to be the Dire Promise and Spare Rations. There's a lot of great stuff going on here. First of all, there's a lot of similarities between the two of them. I know I said similarities, just deal with it. There are 150 RPM lightweight legendary hand cannons, meaning they're in that Goldilocks zone for a time to kill that people do know and love. They come from different locations, including the Infamy playlist where Spare Rations drops from the likeness of Orcs, which I believe is actually this week. The Dire Promise drops from World Drop, so a little bit more inconsistent on that front and definitely something that may change over time. They both have the ability to have high caliber rounds on their second column, but that is where the similarities stop. Damn, why do I keep saying similarities? Similarities. Firstly, Spare Rations has Barrel perks, where Dire Promise has Sight perks. Not a lot of differences, but generally, I like Barrel perks, just slightly better stats in my opinion. And as far as the rest of the perk goes, my opinion, Spare Rations definitely has the advantage allowing you to have kill clip allowing you to have a reload perk like rapid hit or threat detector uh, whereas column three and four for the dire promise is not really a lot of great options however i will say the stats are a little bit different dire promise is a little bit more range a little bit more aim assistance but that it loses out on that handling and recoil direction that spare rations has personally i have an almost god roll spare rations so i'm not really going to be using dire promise on my spare rations i have things like extended barrel high caliber 
hover around, uh, rapid hit, kill clip. Uh, the only issue is that I have a stability match to work, but honestly, I, I, I like the stability on it, so that may be a personal preference. And lastly, coming up at the best type of weapon in the Crucible right now is going to be the auto rifles with three spots. In the last season's auto rifle took none of the spots, and now they have three spots, and this is due in part to a lot of different reasons. Firstly, they got a big buff to the damage. As you can see here, this is the patch notes that released with Season of the Worthy, and you can see the damage increase for a lot of these weapons is pretty significant, allowing for a better time to kill in a lot of different ways. The adaptive frames getting, in my opinion, the best kind of buffs. It has the most changes in its damage output, and that is why, in a lot of cases, the adaptive frames are going to be the best bet. Right, so let's go ahead and talk about the types. Firstly, for the 360s, fires too slow in my opinion. In my opinion, I've never liked the 360s, and they've always fired too slow. Secondly, the 450s, they didn't get enough of a boost, and the recoil of a lot of the high caliber weapons just throw them off a little bit too much. And lastly, the 720s, a little bit more recoil than you want. In my opinion, the 720s are just wannabe submachine guns, so you might as well just be using submachine guns because hand cannons dominate this range anyway. And lastly, we have the 600 RPM adaptive frame slash adaptive frame s kind of weapons because of these exotic frames. Now, firstly, I would like to say adaptive frames are going to be your best bet in Crucible right now because of the buffs, because of the time to kill, in my opinion, because of the comfortability of that range. So that is why the summoner, in my opinion, gets the number nine slot. It's just an effective tool, has a lot of great perks like high caliber rounds, has extended barrels, so a lot of barrel perks, and moving, moving target, range finder, rampage, a lot of great options for summoner. If this had kill clip in this call in this column right here, the weapon would just be untouchable, unbeatable, the best of the best you could possibly have. However, when it comes to the exotics, there's a special reason why they're doing much better than the competition. Firstly, the Soros Regime allows you to, in my opinion, the better option, the spinning up version, allows you to fire faster while maintaining that same 600 RPM damage. Meaning, technically, you'll have a better time to kill than any other 600 RPM auto rifle in the game, and oftentimes, a better time to kill than most all weapons in the game. So it's a generally easy weapon handle at, at 600 RPM. It shoots faster than a 600 RPM and it does the damage of a 600 RPM. It's just an excellent weapon to have. And then on top of that, it's, a, it's an exotic and exotics generally have a better stat distribution. And finally, at number one, why is Hard Light the best weapon in the Crucible right now? Firstly, if you haven't played Crucible, then you should play Crucible. You'll see Hard Light is doing very well on a lot of people's hands. But as far as the reasons behind it, there's a slew of different reasons. First of all, as I mentioned, the 600 RPM auto rifles are doing very well at a pretty good range. Secondly, it is an exotic weapon, meaning that it has a pretty good stat distribution. On top of that, the catalyst allows for even more stability, maxing out the stability at 100 stability for the hard light, which is pretty significant. But honestly, that's not what makes this weapon the number one weapon in the game. The number one reason why hard light is the best of the best is going to be this perk right here, Volatile Light, the main part being no damage fall off. On top of that, it also over penetrates target and ricochets off of surfaces. You've probably seen the light show out there. A lot of people will just be trying to ricochet that weapon, get that double damage from the bounce, but ricochet rounds is not at all how you're going to be getting kills. You may end up getting killed here and there, but the reason you use ricochet rounds is going to be to trap the enemy and allow your team to get that kill. Because if you see this wall of bullets, Bullets just like erupting in front of you, bouncing all over the place. You're going to sit in that corner and you're going to wait because you do not want to run through that double damage bounce. And when you do that, you allow yourself to be very easily snuffed out by grenades. Your teammates can shoot that person in a very vulnerable spot from a lot of different angles without them being able to move very much. It's, it's just a utility uh, for using for your team rather than actually being able to get kills. But anyways, that's going to be pretty much it. I could go over so much more. I could talk about each individual new weapon from Season of the Worthy. I could talk about Sweet Business, Cerberus, Monte Carlo. I could talk about different hand cannons I didn't mention very much about different pulse rifles. I could talk about how everything combines with different special weapons. But th that would make this video over an hour long. And I, I know that this video is already too long. So 
that's gonna be the end of it i hope you guys did enjoy this kind of video let me know in the comments down below uh what you thought what your favorite weapons are and if you did like it leave a like down below and subscribe for more top tens in the future with these beautiful spreadsheets and of course if you end up using these spreadsheets please consider donating to my patreon which is linked in the description down below because without your help i might have to stop doing these spreadsheets soon because they do take a long time to produce and I honestly need to, need to be able to feed myself. But that's it. Hope you guys did enjoy. My name's Anachronic, and I'll see you guys on the next one.